Hi, this is Andrew Clavin on the culture. Some conservatives are arguing that the beginning of the Obama era has been a disaster. They argue that the president's soft approach to tyrants overseas has elicited predictable displays of aggression, boding far worse to come. They feel the president's high-blown ethical rhetoric has given way to his appointments of political hacks. And, of course, there's the gazillion dollars in spending and taxation that conservatives feel is a radical attempt to destroy our free market system. That's the conservative argument. But today I'd like to explain the liberal argument. Shut up. Shut up is the central rationale behind the leftist program. We've heard it expanded upon recently by Democrat bigwigs who want to bring back some version of the misnamed fairness doctrine to try to knock guys like Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity off the air. See, Rush and Sean argue forcefully against liberal policies, and Democrats want to explain to them, shut up. A book called A Manifesto for Media Freedom by my city journal pal Brian C. Anderson and Adam D. Therer describes how high-level Dems also support a plan with another Orwellian name, net neutrality it's called, that would try to force conservatives to shut up online as well. But even if the left can't turn shut up into law, they've worked hard over the years to make it the custom of the country. It's the essence of politically correct phraseology and university speech codes, say it our way or shut up. It's inherent in the media's demonization of conservative commentators, the way they try to turn names like Limbaugh and Ann Coulter into bywords for intolerance so they'll just shut up. And why were there more than half a dozen movies attacking the war on terror and not one in support of it? Oh, wait, I know. Shut up. The left here has been making the shut up argument at least since the 70s, when it became clear that all their other arguments had failed. Since it was the only argument remaining to them, they had to invent different ways to say it. If you pointed out that their weakness allowed the murderous tyranny of communism to expand, for instance, well, you were a McCarthyite. Shut up. If you proved that their leniency toward criminals turned our cities into cesspools, you were a fascist. Shut up. When you pointed out that their welfare policies destroyed black families and created a social disaster of vast proportions, you were a racist, a sexist, uncivil, worse than Hitler, all just different ways of saying, shut up. All around the world, as leftism has failed everywhere, shut-uppery has been called to its defense. The full-blown leftists, the communists, say shut up with prisons and guns. But Western leftists, laboring under traditions of freedom, are subtler. In Europe, they've had more than 50 years of the sort of soft socialism the Democrats are now bringing here. Their anti-individualist, anti-religious, and anti-patriotic policies have so sapped the energies of the European nations that the continent's once great cultures are now flaccid and passive, fit for nothing but to be conquered in slow motion by the violent, intolerant, Islamist invader within. But when people like Ian Hersey Ali, Geert Wilders, or Oriana Falaci have the temerity to decry the left's empowerment of Islamist hatefulness, they're the ones brought up on charges of being hateful, not because they're speaking falsely, mind you, but because, shut up. So now, the left is in charge of America, and shut up is on the march. Watch for that fairness doctrine. Beware of net neutrality. Pay attention to the ways the liberal mainstream news media distort, mock, insult, and exclude the conservative opposition. Listen to the people they don't want you to listen to. And whatever you do, don't shut up. This is Andrew Clavin on The Culture.